All right, guys, welcome to Bike and Roll. If you guys just gather around, we're gonna go over a few things about the Segway. My name is Jeffrey. I'll be your guide this afternoon. Once you get on, it's a fairly intuitive machine, but it does, there's a small adjustment period. You just wanna step on one foot and then the other, and it'll balance like that. Another important thing to notice when you're getting on the Segway is where your feet are. If your feet are too forward, the Segway is gonna automatically go forward. If your feet are too backwards, the Segway is gonna automatically go back. You wanna just step up onto the platform here. Yeah. Oops, there you go. You good? Yep. All right. All right. So come back. Oops, your turn. No. <laughs> All right, Kelsey. In this direction here. Good. All right, everyone's feeling good? Let's go. So this is the Navy Memorial here. Um, we've got four different fountains uh, representing four of the different oceans. The memorial itself, there's one statue over there uh, that's called the Lone Sailor. Uh, represents anyone who has ever served, is serving, or will serve in the United States Navy. I can tell you guys a little bit about the Canadian Embassy, um, if you want. It was um, opened in 1988. It's a, a very fancy building, a very expensive building. Um, we've got 12 columns around here, around the whisper room, which is the echo chamber that we'll go up to in a minute. And if you make loud noises, stress you can, buster, you can hear it echo. Echo! <laughs> Woo! Throughout the chamber. Yeah. So this is the United States Capitol building. Some people think it's the White House. Uh, they're wrong. So originally it was a much smaller building. When you can see the lighter color marble here represents the, the original building. The statue on top uh, is, is called Freedom. It's facing east uh, as it goes. People say, uh, so the sun will never set on the face of freedom. So this is the Smithsonian Castle. The castle now functions as a visitor center. You can go in, um, get information about the different museums, where, go, where to go, plan your trip. What's your favorite aspect about DC? Um, one of the things I like about DC is that it's a planned city, that it's laid out in a, in a grid. This plan. is a beautiful city, it's planned very well. And what a great way to see it. We're at the President's Gallery by Madame Tussauds in Washington, DC, the only location where you can get face to face with all 44 US presidents. Before we meet the President's Henry, Let's meet this lady, Madame Tussauds. Madame Tussauds was born in Strasbourg, Germany in 1761. She got her start making wax figures for the French royalties, the Deaf Mask. That's how it's 14 attractions all around the world. So what's different about the Washington, D.C. location? Washington, D.C. location is more interactive, has 44 presidents, only place you can meet them. And learn a lot about the history. A lot about the history. Let's meet oh, the presidents. Let's go meet them. So obviously I know who this guy is. Father of our nation, George Washington. Tell me something about George we, we don't know. We know he's the father of our nation. He was the only president unanimously elected by the Electoral College. I bet you did know when he, after he was elected, he only had one tooth left. I did not know that. Yep, he refused to wear dentures. He actually wore false teeth, false teeth that were made of hippopotamus, human, and elk teeth. You're kidding. No, seriously. <laughs> Henry, these are so lifelike. The, the size is accurate, the, the attributes are accurate. How are they made? Well, evidently there were no cities, because all of them are deceased. So use watercolors, watercolors and sketches to make their figures. There were no videos, any, anything. How long does it take to make one of these? About six months. So I, I saw the special on HBO on John Adams. He was a feisty guy. Yeah. What else can you tell us about him? Well, he's the first president to live in the White House. I bet you didn't know that. I did not know that. There's something else about these two. They both died on the exact same day. Exact same day. Sounds like a conspiracy to me, but I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> what, no. what are the odds of that? Ah, one of my favorite presidents. Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Here we go. Abraham Lincoln, first president to be assassinated while in office. So you have other figures that weren't presidents. We have a lot of other figures, such as Rosa Parks. Oh, let me have that seat. You don't care. I'm not going anywhere. Rosa didn't. Uh, me either. I'm not we afraid of the police. Parks. 
From civil rights to a lunar landing. Lunar landing. Boss Aldrin and Neil Armstrong. Right Look, here. Mom, I'm on the moon. Hey! To present day, Michelle and Barack Obama. Michelle and Barack. You got game. What a fun job you have. Fun job. You get to meet a lot of great people, including yourself. Likewise. Great to meet you, Henry. Great to meet you, too. You too, Barack. Michelle? You don't get it. You don't. Hey, that's my one. <laughs> <laughs> Now let's learn a few fun facts about some of the other presidents. Like, did you know President Reagan began his career as a radio sports announcer in Davenport, Iowa? President Ford received offers to play for the Green Bay Packers and the Detroit Lions. President Eisenhower was the first president to have his inauguration broadcast on television. My fellow Americans, I want to thank Henry again for a wonderful tour. Now it's time to party with some celebrities. We're one of the only museums, I would venture to say the only museum in the world who changes an exhibit daily. These are our front pages, they are daily front pages, and they're from um, all 50 states and a selection of countries around the world. They change every day. What are the highlights that we should definitely check out? Well, you're going to definitely want to check out the Pulitzer Prize photography exhibit. The gallery there features photographs from all the Pulitzer winners, as well as some of the cameras used by the photographers. And it's a great place where you can really dig in and learn about not just see the photo itself, which is amazing and resonant enough, obviously, having won a Pulitzer, but you can dig in and get the story behind the photograph, get the journalists, the photojournalists, view and understand what was going on, how they were experiencing things. What else should we see? So you want to see the Berlin Wall. We have um, eight pieces of the original Berlin Wall here on exhibit in Washington. I don't think anybody alive today in our generation will ever forget the horrible tragedy of 9-11. Absolutely not, and we um, have a special gallery here dedicated to 9-11 um, and understanding in particular how and why journalists did what they did on that day. But it also includes some amazing objects, the most iconic of which is surely the communications tower from the uh, antenna from the top of the tower. So from a little bit of sadness to, to, to joy, I see lots of kids in the interactive section. Absolutely, yeah. We have this great interactive newsroom where you can see what it's like to be a TV reporter. Try and read the teleprompter. Try and make your cue. Hello, I'm John Olson. One of the highlights of a trip to Washington, D.C. would be seeing the president, of course, but few people will ever get that close. But don't worry, the latest big screen exhibit at the museum brings you as close as the president's photographer. The International Spy Museum has the largest collection of spy artifacts of any museum in the world. And it just so happens we have an actual former spy taking us on tour today. Let's go back to what got you sure. into the world of spy and espionage. <laughs> well, I went into that world at the height of the Cold War. The, war, the Cold War was getting underway and uh, I was approached by the agency. and. Uh, we were very concerned about you know, the Soviet Union, communism, all that business, and this is the 50s we're talking about, late 50s. A lot of the stuff you actually used. We're right here in disguise. I've used disguise. Uh, we're here near uh, uh, bugging equipment and so forth. I've used that sort of thing, not necessarily everything here, but certainly the, the, the elements of espionage that are depicted here I've been involved in, yes. So we think of spies, I mean, everybody's intrigued with the life of a spy. You have James Bond. Okay. You think of it as the Bond experience. All right. How much of it is like Bond? My easy answer is all of it. But of course, well, that's not quite true, is it? Okay. <laughs> I like this one because I used to watch Get Smart growing up and I loved <laughs> Maxwell Smart. He had a phone. Yeah, that was actually a very early cell phone, wasn't it? Obviously this is out of service. This isn't one of the newer technologies. How long does an artifact have to be out of service before it can come 
to the museum. Obviously, we don't want to see all the latest, greatest stuff here. We use our own judgment in what we're putting out here. Everything you're seeing in here, you know, has been described in the literature and the photographs. So, Peter, I love this one particularly because you actually wore a jacket. That's like true. This. What was that like? Okay. This is called the buttonhole camera, okay? Because the lens is in the buttonhole. In other words, if we could if we could open and close the lens, you would see it like a little eye down there. So this exhibit is really for the birds. Uh, that's one way of putting it. But <laughs> this is one of my favorite exhibits. What well, these guys got a camera hanging off of them, and what that camera has is an automatic shutter release. So when the pigeon flies, the shutter release starts taking pictures. Well, thank you for having us. This has been sure, a lot of fun. The pleasure. Pleasure to meet okay. you. Southern Hospitality is alive and well in the Adams Morgan District of D.C. at Madams Oregon. It's just a goofy play on the neighborhood, you know? Uh, Adams Morgan, Madams Oregon. I mean, I'm not exactly a rocket scientist here. You know? <laughs> I love it though, you've had it for 20 years. You guys are celebrating your 20 year anniversary 20 years year. next month. And in fact, the guy you've got playing was the first band I hired 20 years ago, Bobby Parker. Let's talk about Bobby Parker. He's, this guy's a legend around here. Bobby's, he's not just a legend here. I mean, I literally, I had uh, Steve Winwood and, and Tom Petty call me, bring him out to meet them at a show. Uh, he's the only guy that the Beatles admit to stealing from. Love it. Led Zeppelin, note for note, Moby Dick. I mean, over the years he's played Starting in 57, you know, this guy's been playing nonstop. You know, Washington's a town that, you know, not much is real. And uh, there's so much acrimony politically, etc. I will tell you that when they come in here, Democrats, Republicans, Ambassadors, you know, we've had heads of state in here. There are no arguments about politics. The music unites everybody. I can tell. And that. it's just, uh, it's the kind of place, you know, that as they said Washington, a town where not much is real. This place is real. When I pulled up tonight, I saw the sign. Sorry, we're open. Pretty I much I, says it all. I knew. I, <laughs> it does say it all. <laughs> this place is very tongue in cheek. You guys are all about humor, good times, good music, good food, just bringing people together. What happened with the Beatles? McCartney was a good friend of mine, he still is. He know. stole your riff, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know I'm you glad know. you said it. <laughs> What's the riff? It's What's good. song? Uh, I feel fine. What's the best memory for you? Um, the Apollo days uh, with uh, uh, all the original artists. Lil Anthony, the Imperials, uh, Frankie Lyman, uh, Frankie Avalon. So how do you keep it going? I mean, here we are. I'm not going to tell your age. We discussed this. <laughs> but you're still bringing it. Your first hit was before I was born. How do you keep relevant? How do you keep the energy? I love the music, man. And people make me happy out there. Let me hear you say yes. Thanks for joining us on Next Stop from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. We had some wonderful experiences, met some great people, and we learned a lot. We hope you did too. Thanks to this episode's sponsors, Destination D.C. and the Madison Hotel, Washington, D.C. As always, a warm thank you to our good friends and title sponsors, Alaska Airlines and the Alaska Airlines Visa Signature Card. Next Stop, where will we take you next? Make good memories, everybody. <laughs>